apparently this is the most heavily edited of any of these, and I guess I could kind of see that, because there wasn't that much gore. If she accidentally kills the father in the opening, then why the hell do we see her concentrate to do it? Could they not make up their mind? If you fuck up the continuity, that basically... I mean, that just kinda kills all the hope for the rest of the film, and this was the very beginning. Why did the father not bother to learn how to swim? I get he was drunk, but if you know the basics, you're gonna do a little bit of movement to try to, you know, keep yourself above the water. I mean, he wasn't too drunk that he could that he couldn't, you know, wave back and forth as she was, you know, rocking the foundation under him. If psychic powers were the only way they could think of releasing Jason from the water, then I personally feel that it would have been fine if they had just left him down there. I mean, this one, at the end, it's just kind of, nope, he's gone, he's dead, I took care of him. There's no, you know, hope for a sequel. The last one left it off with him still alive down there. He's just trapped, so, you know, someone could unwittingly release him, and then they do it in this one with fucking psychic powers, sorry. And in this one, it's just kind of, nope, he's gone. Would have been really depressing if this was the very last Jason movie. Anyway, the effects on the climax with you know him falling through stuff and you know stuff like that weren't too bad but why does she keep believing that just you know dropping stuff on him or making him fall is going to kill him you know okay i get he falls through a couple of stories but is that really it you've you know he's a zombie he's I liked the unmasking. It wasn't as forced as some of the others, you know. It was kind of, uh, she's trying to make his head explode kind of thing, and you know, his face expands, the mask bursts. That was one of the better unmaskings thus far. And the makeup on his face was great. I will admit that. It doesn't exactly hurt that Kane Hodder is doing a motherfucker of a performance. Did anybody else hope that she would go ahead and, you know, mentally choke that bitch with the pearls? Don't even remember her name, but, you know, when she was making fun of Tina. I mean, I didn't care for Tina, but you don't fucking do that. I was really kind of hoping that she would just, you know, do a full-on, yeah, I find your lack of faith disturbing kind of thing on her. Again, the most obnoxious character is the last one killed. I am, at that point, we're just cheering for him and we're pissed off at Jason when he kills her that fast, you know. I kind of like that they had Crazy Ralph narrate to us in the beginning about it's got a death curse. I do like that the opening was at least, again, a recap made up of, you know, bits from the earlier films and actually cut, you know, instead of just the ending of the previous movie or something. But then we have the stereotypical violent drunk father, who for some reason helps her at the very end. I mean, I heard that he was supposed to be a zombie and they had to censor it or something like that, but still, I don't know, I, and it just cuts, you know, abruptly, she just faints and then she wakes up and everything is fine, you know. Anyway, the opening also has fucking disco ball lighting hockey mask. Have you ever met someone where they tell you something 
and you're certain that it's true, but then they go on to tell you the exact opposite, and they have such a damn good poker face that you can't tell which is the truth and which is the lie. This movie is that person. I couldn't figure out what the hell was supposed to... what any of these characters... You know, what their motivations were for the way they behaved. Half of the time, what they were even saying with the dialogue. About the dialogue, when he's... you know, when that random guy is... you know, out in the woods, they're talking about, you know, can't build more on the fire, there's no wood, and then he says, you know, she points out that they are in the woods, but, yeah. If, you know, he then suggests, why don't we hit the sack? I don't know what he's going to do in the sack if there is no wood. You know, right before the bitch with pearls first mocks Tina, she asks that other guy, you wanna do me a favor? He agrees instantly, and I kinda get the feeling that he did not hear the last two words. The matchbook moving thing was pitifully poorly done. Ah, she sees two of the nearly a dozen and a half kills psychically. whoop de fucking do At the start of her electrifying him, which is interesting, you know, suddenly she can control her powers, channel them very carefully, but at the beginning of that, it seriously looks like she's fucking tickling him with the branches. Anyway, those are my thoughts on Friday the 13th, Part 7, The New Blood. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.